Mr. Chairman, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Forbes finished by saying there's a bit of an odd jumble of, uh, of uh, thoughts. If, he thought, if you thought that was a jumble, you ain't seen nothing yet. Um, as Chairman says, I'm a dairy farmer from Longford. Um, just give you a little, some of the nice images of, of dairy farming in Ireland so as we get the right impression from the beginning in case anybody thinks we're doing terrible things to, to the countryside. They're roughly, they're roughly, the four photographs from my farm taken more or less on the four quarters of the year, trying to give you the impression that we're out at least three quarters of the year on grass. We're actually out for 10 months of the year on grass in our farm. Um, so I'm going to very briefly run through the similarities between New Zealand and Ireland, a bit on sustainability, um, a few of the contradictions that are in this whole area of the output and, and farming in Ireland, and then you see the rest, and I'll go quite quickly because I, in, in, in the introduction of the chairman, he says he's going to give a brief response. So I'm, um, The similarities are we've got quite very, very similar climates, slightly warmer in New Zealand, but we have advantages that I don't think they have. We've got, um, we, we don't use irrigation in this country, and I think that's a massive advantage. Um, Forbes fleetingly referred to, we'll have a discussion on irrigation later. I think irrigation on Canterbury will come under threat in time, even though they say it's using ice melt from the Southern Alps that would otherwise flow to the sea. I think it will, ultimately, somebody will say no. But if not from an environmental perspective, certainly from a cost perspective, irrigation costs money. We don't have that cost. The similarities, the greatest similarities between Ireland and New Zealand are that we've got both a very, very low footprint per unit of output. And we'll come back to that later. But also, the relative importance to the two economies. Dairy farming is hugely important to the two economies. Less so in Ireland at the moment, but I hope increasingly so in Ireland over time. So what we've got, we, somebody, a farmer getting up at a presentation like this tends to say what's wrong. I'm going to say what's right from the beginning. We've got top grass research in Ireland. We've got a wonderful database owned by the industry, and that's crucially important for us driving knowledge into the future. We've got a cattle breeding federation, which we're now developing the right genetics for Ireland, a breeding program for us, and we're world leaders in genomics, which I think is going to very, very much tie into Forbes' comment, we will have more efficient cows that calve more regularly and are more efficient at converting grass into, into um, a saleable product milk. We've got an animal health initiative now where the industry has come together to deal with the non-statutory diseases in agriculture. In, and um, I think that's going to be a huge help over time. We've got farmer-owned processing, and that's very important. And I think equally, family farms, a family farm model is going to drive output um, more so than any other thing, because it is, it's, a, it's an economic model that really works. And the lack of scale in this country is, is offset by, the, the, by, by that, farming, that family farm model. We've got Board Bia and Origin Green, a wonderful initiative. Time won't allow me to go into some of the detail of these, but I'm just giving them as prompts for you to maybe uh, look up later if you want to, or take it from me. These are good initiatives. We've got a dairy board centrally selling. And I think oh, sometimes we, we give the government a hard time. But we actually have got a very supportive Department of Agriculture in this country and good farm organizations, which, will, which by necessity must be part of whatever debate we develop over time around uh, climate, climate change mitigation processes. So grass, my favorite topic is grass. Um, this is the plant that, that the, you know, the, the world or, or the nature has developed right across the, the globe. This is the most, the most populous plant across the globe. The majority of the animals, the vast herds of, of, of um, ruminating animals across the globe eat this product and they turn it into food. Okay, and some over, over time, others ate it, but now we can use animals to turn this into a saleable product, milk. Okay, there is a byproduct. Methane is, a, is a definitely a, a byproduct that we have to deal with. But let's find ways to offset this. And Forbes, I think, very neatly gave us some indications how we might offset this. Forestry is something. We're going to, it is sustainable to produce milk in this country. OK, we won't go into the detail again, but I will lead you to the bottom of that slide in the quote from the IIEA, um, which I think is always very important to refer to a quote for your hosts. 
So Irish food production is highly sustainable, involving a balance between water consumption, greenhouse gas emissions, biodiversity and animal welfare. There is a need for a balance in the debate on climate change to ensure that sustainability is kept to the forefront of discussions. And we'll touch on this topic very briefly again before I finish. So positive impact. Again, time, I'll scoot through this, but it is going to be hugely important growing agriculture and dairy output in this country. Um, so equally, it will have an impact on the, the economics of, of rural Ireland. I, my first visit to New Zealand, I'm lucky enough to get to the South Island New Zealand before agriculture really, dairy farming really took off in the South Island. And I was back then again a couple of years ago. Um, the difference was extraordinary what dairy farming has brought to the South Island in New Zealand. And I think we can have the same kind of dramatic impact on the, the rural economy in Ireland with dairy farm, with developing dairy farming in Ireland. Hugely positive for, for, um, you know, for the GDP of the country and for exporting product out of the country. So let's look at a few contradictions. I'm going to give you six statements, all of which are true. Ireland must increase its national herd to take advantage of the ending of quotas for the rural economy, or Ireland must decrease its national herd to reduce methane emissions. Next. Meat and milk is, the one, is one of the ways to convert grass which we can't eat into things that we can eat. Or, meat and milk dairy is a very inefficient way to convert sunlight into food. We should all eat plants, cut out the middleman or the cow, and it's ten times more efficient. Or the third comment is, modern agriculture is increasingly efficient. World agricultural productivity is three times more today than it was 50 years ago. Or, modern agriculture is hugely inefficient. It now takes about 10 calories of fossil fuel to produce one calorie of food. That's the US figure. So we're eating fossil fuels and we have to stop it. So you're confused. You're right to be confused because they're all true. So in discussions, you know, you, you know, you know what Minkin said. There's always a well-known solution to every human problem. It's neat, plausible, but usually wrong. So we don't need, I believe, and I'm certainly not going to get into the climate change discussion except acknowledging that it exists or that who's responsible, um, but there, because there's no simple solution. But what I want to talk about is how we mitigate its effects, how we unpick some of the apparent contradictions above, and if we don't, but we don't need to find the right solution, because there isn't one, just solutions that work. And we need to do this at every level, local and national, and definitely at international level. If we get this right, our impact on the global economy will take care of itself. Behaviour change is slow, very, very slow to change behaviour. And there's a number of different things that change behaviour. I don't know where we are as an industry on this triangle. I believe we're someplace in the bottom, on the base. We're starting to create awareness around this issue of climate change. We're slowly moving towards educating people that we can do something about it. We don't yet have commitment. We certainly don't have legislation or financial, the financial attitude to change it. But it will take those two things to, for us ultimately to bring the change. Um, if we look at anything where we've made significant behavioural changes to, to behaviour, it's always been that legislation piece that has done it in the end. Seat, wearing seat belts, using mobile phones in the car, smoking, all of those things were ultimately driven by being forced to do it. And that force piece, I suggest, can be linked to um, common agricultural payment. Others, particularly New Zealanders, don't like the fact that we receive it, but it should be linked. I think sustainable food production and how we get rewarded from Europe should become one and the same thing. And I think that way we will drive the change on the farms necessary to mitigate the, the, the impact, because nothing else, I think, has the, has the effect to force us with, than somebody giving us money externally, helping us to, in, encouraging us to actually do the right thing. After all of those things, will we get the behaviour change? So it's slow. So recently, a new commission study, the carbon footprint of Irish meat and is, the, is among the lowest in the EU. And I think we need to continue to look at this remarkable thing, fact. We should have a national task force as to how to exploit the potential in this country, because I think the, it's too big to ignore. Uh, I strongly recommend the scientific community among itself to get, to get agreement as to, as to how we need to, to um, mitigate things. 
we feed as an industry, or any industry, feeds off disagreement in the scientific community. When you get agreement, you get, you get people saying, hey, these people now agree. I know 90% of, of significant and eminent scientists globally accept the, um, accept the principle, but we certainly know, don't yet get agreement. At the moment, we've got this whirlpool of scientific um, impact and political, and political, or lack of political will swirling around, and in the meantime, we feed off the inaction. So I think they, they would do well to get together on it. Um, it will sometimes we have a dramatic effect that makes us do things or, or has dramatic change, and I think we shouldn't be waiting for the dramatic effect, some global, global impact issue to, to make us uh, change. We should be working towards showing that we're responsible about this and that we, we understand its impact. So we need consumers to look at the whole thing. Um, I'd love to see a rating where per kilo of output, there's a rating system per kilo of output, because we will do well in that kind of an international uh, rating, and I think then consumers can make an informed decision um, around other things. So I think New Zealand and Ireland would, would certainly should work together in having a look at how we might have a, a rating on, on per, per unit of output. Um, marginal land for forestation, Forbes dealt with it much more eloquently than I could dare. But, yes, we have a lot of marginal land in Ireland not doing an awful lot of work. Um, we have a hesitancy about tackling this issue and about in, in strongly encouraging more afforestation. Fine, it, it will not, it's not a permanent solution, but it's certainly a very, very good first step. Uh, in conversation with the chairman tonight, Tom, he suggested that we might link dairy growth with farmers encouraging other farmers to convert some of the land to forestry. It's a nice idea at one level, but at another level, we've just come out of a, of a, a forced system of quota restriction, and I don't want us to go into another one where we're forcing, you know, where we as, as farmers go out and encourage another farmer to do something else. I'd, I'd like to see him do it for the right reason, and I'd like to see central policy encouraging him to do it. But yes, I think we should be setting a much greater target we, I think we, we don't even meet 10,000 hectares a year of forestation. We should be doubling that in the, in the short term. Um, just a few little, little comments and statements. Um, the UK imports about the same of a couple of thousand, 100,000 tonnes of pork per year. It imports that amount, it exports that amount. It's doing the same with, with beef, uh, certainly it's doing the same with lamb. It's importing and exporting. There's a lot of silly stuff going on around the world. And just, I threw them in just to show that I'm not always just in, in Killishy County, Longford. A few observations I had from trips I've had around the world at different times. And these are three specific farms that was on on those three countries. In Zimbabwe, I saw the scarcest resource they had, water, been used to grow flowers, to be trucked to Nairobi, to be sent to Amsterdam, to be sold in, on the European flower market. That's happening out there and while we're having this debate around, around uh, agricultural production. In Argentina, a farmer was on a number of years ago, has since been bought by the Saudis to grow crops in Saudi Arabia to be sent to, sorry, crops in, in Argentina to be sent to ship to Saudi Arabia to feed their cows to produce milk that we can do much more efficiently. In China, we were there another, another few years ago and uh, the alfalfa was being shipped from the mid, Midwestern states of US to feed cows in China. You know, this is, these are the sort of things that were happening or that's happening around the world. I'm not even going to dare get into the whole area of food waste, 35% of all the food in the world wasted. You know, I'm not even going to get into the obesity issue with more people dying of, dying of obesity than there are of, of, of hunger. But anyway, these are all issues that society has to have a big discussion about. And it's only when we make this discussion global can we actually find this. It is silly for me maybe to have my dairy herd here while somebody cuts down a rainforest in Borneo to grow palm oil to sell to the same market. It has to be a global, a global discussion. And it is, to me, talking about the, in percentage terms, is a crude mechanism. It must be in international, in international total terms. And uh, so, look, at just a few thoughts and ideas. I have to just agree with, with Forbes in general. Envy him where he lives in the world, although he tells me he lives most half the time in the UK. I don't know how, why he's foolishly doing that when he could be living in, in Canterbury. But anyway, um, just leaving you with the same images at the beginning. And um, I hope it's 
provoked a few thoughts and ideas. Thank you very much.